Hey Kuda, how are you doing? What's up, G? I'm great, bro. I'm great as well, man. I'm fantastic. It's nice to to have you here. It's nice to be here, bro. <laughs> you know, it feels like one of those long time listeners, first time caller moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've been going through some of your bits, bro. So, and, yeah, no. Nah, and the way we got it like set up is also like really interesting because we only like met on is it Friday? On Friday, yeah. It's been yeah. less than a fucking week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, yeah, let's go. Let's let's get this out yeah, of the way. So yeah. that's that's really interesting. But Do um, is. you are an artist. I am, yes. You're a curator. Yes, sir. <laughs> I am. SP Gallery. Uh-huh. You are a what's the name for is is it a brewer? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a brewer. Um I'm a I'm a bad musician. No, I'm not a bad musician, but like I don't <laughs> take musician it as well. Yeah, I don't take it as seriously as my actual real musician friends. But yeah, I make music. So you're doing like a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, and I um, used to be a journalist. So yeah, yeah, initially, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you actually studied in. in, in um, that's what I did for my bachelor's degree. Yeah, so I did pr- pretty much yeah sports journalism. Yeah. So yeah, started off as a sports journalist, then became a political journalist, and then. Yeah, kind so, of like that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because, yeah. <laughs> like, journalists, I'll speak for myself. Yeah. I don't think of myself as a creative. <laughs> yeah? You think of yourself as a journalist? Not necessarily a journalist, man. Yeah. I just generally hate boxes. Mm, same. That's how I'd put it. Same, 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 same. I just do stuff. Th- that's it, right? Yeah, like, I, uh, just, I do stuff. <laughs> they used to, I think, back in the mid 2010s or whatever, they used to call people like us slashers. Yeah. Yeah, like actor slash writer slash blah blah. Exactly. Like yeah. you just get the stuff done and yeah. I don't know, it's odd because sometimes it's like We're storytellers, that's what we are. We're storytellers. Exactly. Yeah. That's and we're using I'll, different I'll that, ways different to do mediums that. To, yeah. to tell stories, yeah. isn't it? That's it, that's it. <laughs> and so for you, I think what you're most prominently known for right now is the art. Yeah. Yeah. Basqua. Basqua, shout out Basqua, man. Yeah. What's up with that? What's going on with that? So let's start with the name. <laughs> let's start <laughs> with the name? Yeah, it cool. sounds like something else that's very popular, but I'm not sure if it yeah. is. What does it sound like to you? And then we'll see whether um, you're landing. The artist. The guy who was uh, shouted out on Watch yeah. the Throne. What's his name? Jean-Michel Basquiat. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. he is actually my favorite artist of all time. Really? Um, coming from my favorite mo- art movement of all time, which is downtown New York. 1980s yeah. Yeah. and some of the characters around that time is like Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, Jean-Michel, Alex Katz and those are probably like in terms of stylistically my work isn't necessarily like Basquiat's like Basquiat's work was very compared to mine it was like a lot messier yeah I'll say <laughs> but I just fucking loved him because like dude like the first time I discovered him I was already kind of into art for like years, but I, I still hadn't seen him or heard of him. Yeah. And to be able to see someone who was black and doing as much as he was doing back then, yeah, that cause... was like crazy <laughs> to me, bro. I was like, there's no way this dude existed. <laughs> like, it, it kind of felt like the world was hiding him from me in a way when I first discovered him. Yeah. Um, actually, I have a Basquiat tattoo right there. Like, I've got his crown yeah. on, my, on my leg and stuff. But, um, what really came about for that name, right, is when I started painting, like, more work, I wanted to post it on Instagram. And I didn't want to post it on my actual main personal account. Yeah. Because I don't want to bore people who don't want yeah. to see that shit. <laughs> um, why, and, why do people do that? Because that's the thing I do as well. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I've posted too much. Yeah, too much of this <laughs> odd stuff, bro. People be like, bro, where's the... <laughs> If I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Allegedly. I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> um, but, um, so, um, I'm also really into Skepta. And yeah. I was watching some old interview with Skepta. Skepta's about, dope. Skepta's fucking sick, bro. Skepta's, he's also like a doer. Like, he's do, like, a super doer. He actually, well, uh, right? just quickly on Skepta, he actually just did his first auctioned that. painting through oh. Sotheby's. So, exactly, I saw that last week. Phenomenal, bro. <laughs> like, it's a Nigerian thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, I think it ended up place. selling for like, yeah, Mama, uh, Mama Goes to Market, yeah, exactly. as they called it. I think that sold for like 81,000 pounds or something. Someone, you can fact check that, fact check of me. Of course. I think it sold for like 81,000 pounds, but it was valued at 22,000 pounds. So, 
went like nearly four times as much. As much. Yeah, so that's that's pretty fucking sick to me, man. Um, but yeah, I was watching an old Skepta interview and he was talking about how he came up with the name Skepta. Yeah. And how he really wanted it to be something unique and two syllables. So that's what I wanted for my basketball page. When I made that basketball page, I never imagined that I would get into art professionally. This was just like a hobby and trying to just have a space to, for me personally, really, to just see my art evolve yeah. across the years. Um, so I took the BAS from Basquiat, yeah. and then I took the KWA from Kudakwashi, which is my name, so yeah. BAS KWA Basqua. Because I was like, that's unique. It's got a reference to my favorite artist, and it's also got my own name in it. Yeah. And yeah, now it's just grown into its own thing, bro. It's like grown... <laughs> Much more than what I thought of just like a little Instagram page, yeah. And and so, when was this when you actually started uh, your Instagram page? Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. It was like December 2016. So have you always been into art or? Yeah, so I come you from. And then uh, you stopped? I come from like, so my mom's very creative. Yeah. But she's much more into stuff like landscape design and, and things like that. So like garden, like garden designs is what yeah. she's into. But I always grew up in like a house full of art, always. And my older brother was a good, <laughs> yes, he was a good artist. He was a good artist. He was a good artist. Yeah. He's going to check this out and he's going to check me on that. But he was a good <laughs> artist. So I grew up um, around people, enough people who were creative, but like my dad and my other brother are very scientific and mathematical. Yeah. So I had two and two in a way. Um, and I kind of tried to align a bit more with the sciences when I was growing up, all the way till I was probably like 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Um, but I always loved art. I was always into it. Um, but I also kind of hated... I hated how I was taught art in a way at high school. What do you mean? Um, so my art teacher was incredible. She was dope, yeah. but it didn't necessarily make sense. To, so like when, when you're at high school in our system, um, and this is still in Zimbabwe, right? This is in Zimbabwe. Yeah. yeah. This was at St. George's. Yeah. You're kind of, you, you're taught, like you're taught how to do art in a graded way, like a very regimented out of a hundred percent. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you'd be yeah. like, yo, draw a banana. I draw a banana. You get like 88%. I get you like get 68%. Like yeah, so I don't know, man. Like art was never that for me because it, it, was, it was creative expression. Unique creative expression was what was the most important yeah. thing to me. So uh, by the time we get into form two, we had to make a decision on whether to continue doing art for your O-levels or to do history for your O levels. It was the choice between the two. Yeah. And I had the same average for both of those classes. And from all the people that I saw doing art at O levels and shit, I was like, I don't want that life. Like, I really don't want that. Those guys looked fucking miserable, bro. I'll be amazed if there's that many people still doing art who did it at O level, yeah. um, like still doing it right now. Like actively. Yeah, because I just think... Um, there's something about that regimented way, and I do understand why they do it that way, but um, it just wasn't for me. I, I just wasn't the, the geezer for it. Yeah. 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 And, and so, what brings you then back to art? Because what I'm getting from that yeah. is, you picked history? I picked history and tried to focus a bit more on the sciences, right? And yeah. try to have a real career or whatever. <laughs> a conventional <Yeah>. career. <laughs> um, Lawyer, accountant. Yeah, engineer. things like that. So, like, okay. my mom wanted me to be... She would have wanted me to be a lawyer or an accountant. Exactly yeah. those two options. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know, man. Like, it just... I ended up failing history at O-levels. <laughs> it was the only subject I failed. Like, I got a yeah. fucking D for it. Yeah. And that was mostly because we had to do so many exams. And history is so dense to study. And I just I, I just put a sacrifice. I was like, I don't have the time to study all of this. So kind of walked into that exam and started freestyling. And answered <laughs> questions that weren't within our syllabus. Like, started answering, like, American history and stuff. Because yeah. I was like, I know a little bit of that. <laughs> And then it turned out you didn't. <laughs> uh, it turned out I really did not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, 
I guess after Form 2, I didn't think about art for a long time. So Form 2, we're 14 years old, right? Yeah. So from when I'm 14 till about 24, really. Yeah. Because you didn't went on right? to do like journalism, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I moved to Australia after Form 4. So yeah. I moved to Australia when I was 16. Yeah. And so that was May 2008 then. Um, I moved to Australia and... Yeah, I um, I decided to be like a, I decided to keep doing the sciences for a bit. So I was going to do like sports science. Yeah. And then I figured out I really don't want to do science. <laughs> so a lot of my life has been like doing shit I don't want to do as such. Until and then realizing, oh, I actually don't want to do this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did, I did sports science for like a year and it was just like, realized that's not for me. And I was always a good writer. That's something that's been consistent since I was eight years old. I've been a very good writer. Yeah. So I figured, yeah, I may as well become a journalist because that's where my writing skills and storytelling could actually be, could be pretty yeah. dope. Yeah. So I did sports journalism instead, graduated like pretty much top of my class in that, and then became a sports journalist for a bit. Worked for like... Um, there it's called Fox Sports. Worked for like Fox Sports for a yeah, bit. Yeah. Worked for like um, mostly Fox Sports in terms of sports stuff and did like independent, like, oh, um, like freelance, like freelancing yeah. stuff. Yeah, things like that. Mostly focusing on like football, rugby, cricket, whatever. Best job I've ever had, man. Like I fucking love that job. It was sick, yeah. but the pay was shit. It tends to be, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the pay was trash. <laughs> so oh, I know it's trash, bro. So after that. Um, Got into political journalism and started working for like the Huffington Post and stuff and like oh, did dope. some, yeah, yeah, it was cool. Did some stuff for like The Guardian, did ABC, did SBS, did Sky, just did like little bits up and around, right? But it was mostly Huffington Post. And then 2016, and yeah, wait, for that job, paid better, yeah. But it was way more intense, and I don't. It, yeah. I think it actually made me politics is. Yeah, it, politics. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, <laughs> bro, it'd be like you wake up, right, and it's like Australian time zone, so like wake up, <laughs> and it's like seventeen Afghani girls have been like kidnapped yeah. and shit. <clears throat> Write something. It's like, bro, yeah. I just got up, bro. Like, I just got up. Really, like dystopian shit, isn't it? Yeah, it's super dystopian. So like, it really affected my worldview yeah. and made me depressed. So I got into like, I got into a really, really bad patch of depression yeah. in 2016 and then like started going to therapy and stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, legit. It's, it's, it's a bit hilarious because um, I was in, in journalism before. I was a writer yeah. for, but I was in tech journalism. Yeah. Um, but it was a difficult job in the sense that um, you have to watch like a lot of news. Exactly, bro. And the news is bad, bro. Right? Like and the news is I usually really not like nice. I hate news. Like I, yeah. like, <clears throat> I don't watch news. I yeah. Almost like never watch news. Um, I watch news occasionally with my family, like maybe when we're eating. But yeah, it's always the same thing. You try it's avoid always it, like right? really like depressing stuff. Yeah. And it's stuff that I can't do anything about. Like there was a hurricane in Canada. Like, yeah. I'm not loud. What can I do from here? Uh, and it's just not like. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know if you know Jay Shetty. <coughs> no. But he was, you should check him out. Yeah. You should also check out Jay Shetty. Yeah. <laughs> but he was talking about um, how, in terms of like human evolution to this stage, right? Yeah. The amount of information that we have, we aren't, our, our minds aren't necessarily designed to be able to take in to that amount of so bad much. news yeah. daily, bro. <laughs> I agree with that, man. Yeah. Like, I feel the same, especially yeah. regarding news. Yeah. And then that's when I realized, okay, maybe like this kind of active journalism yeah. is, is not for me because there's so much um, yeah. negativity. It's just gnarly, bro. Term. It's just so gnarly. And like, there was so much about journalism that was tough. Like the pay isn't that great yeah. for the amount of hours that you put in, but it's yeah. such a dying industry in a way <laughs> like it's a dying compet like honestly like in my final year you work school, almost like 18 hours a day yeah yeah every day yeah yeah and it has to be good as well it has to be top quality especially to if even you're doing, have a chance to even have a chance bro because like if you're doing journalism in english you're competing with every other english writer on the yeah. planet yeah and yeah. it has to be good but it also like 
man, the trade-off is a lot. And just knowing that this cuts every single year, yeah. there are people getting like cut from their jobs every yeah. single year. It's like, it's just grim. So I got like super depressed <laughs> and then I went to therapy about it, kind of had like a crisis. Yeah. Um, and at this stage, I was also, earlier on that year, I had decided to go back to uni um, to do a master's, to do like my MBA. When I say earlier on that year, no, I started my master's in 2015. So I started, yeah. I was doing a master's in 2015. Was at balancing, the same time. Yeah, yeah balancing full-time Ooh, work that and sounds stuff. Like- I mean, it's terrible. It, it it wasn't it wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah, so there was just yeah. a lot of pressure from a lot of angles, right? Yeah. And that masters though was was a be- it was a beautiful decision, and I'll tie that into my art in a bit. Yeah. But like, um, when I was in therapy, my therapist recommended art as a form of therapy. She said, when you're just by yourself and stuff, you might yeah. benefit from just like drawing and sketching and doodling considering you have a remote interest in it. And then it, that remote interest grew to a much larger interest. Yeah. And so when did you start uh, the art as an outlet? Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah, December yeah. 2016. Yeah. 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 Started that as like a consistent thing, as in I would, dr- I would draw or sketch something pretty much every single day. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's and really now dope. I paint. Now I paint six days a week, six hours a day. Is is usually my hours. It's, it's basically work now. It is. It is <laughs> not for sure. It's been. Uh, it's been. So, I started art in 2016, but I've been doing it professionally since 2019. So it's been yeah. feeding me. It's been my main kind of source of income for the last three years. Yeah. So maybe yeah. let's let's get into that. You start in 2016. Yeah. How does the transition from a dystopian Kuda's life where he's a journalist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do yeah. you transition from that to then making art a career that you actually monetize? Yeah. Because that's like a really difficult thing. Yeah, it took time for sure. Uh, so again, like starting 2016, just doing it, right? Yeah. And it kept just being for a lot of years, just doing it. Um, but after I graduated from my master's degree in 2016 as well. Yeah. And my, my master's was an MBA with like a major in PR. Yeah. So ended up working corporate jobs in like communications and PR and stuff. And two main ones. So started off at this construction company, yeah. which was great pay, probably like the first time I got paid real money. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I can say, yeah, I fucking hated that job, bro. I fucking <laughs> despised it. Um, it was just too... I'm, I, I don't really do well with... with Repetitiveness. Uh, rep- uh, yeah. Uh, repetitiveness. Yeah, I don't do well with that. I really don't. Like, so every single one of my days, I could tell what my day was going to be like before I even started. And, and that I'd, wasn't the thing you liked? Not at all, bro. So I did that job for like a year and a half. Yeah. And then that was when I was still in Brisbane. Then I moved down to Melbourne um, and worked for the same company in Melbourne for like a few months and then like just got a different job. Doing similar things yeah. at a health insurance company. I will not name that health insurance company <laughs> yeah. because I'm That's gonna funny. I'm gonna trash him right now. <laughs> that fine. job was funny. fucking worse. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that job was way worse for me. <laughs> and I got that job like when they were kind of going through the, probably their biggest PR crisis, right? Oh, yeah. And it's fine. Like going through PR crisis is kind of like what I was there for. It should be enjoyable right yeah. but no the way they handled it i didn't necessarily agree with how the company handled it yeah so um that was frustrating and hated that job for sure but also decent pay um it's always a crisis isn't it like, yeah it's, it's keeping you alive but it's also killing you at the same time yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. it's feeding <laughs> it's feeding your tummy but not your soul right so <laughs> <laughs> I started doing art a lot more. So this is like, um, this is now like 2018. Yeah. I'm really doing a lot of art at this point. And in that job, one of my workmates, um, I met him. His name is Ange. Yeah. Ange ends up really enjoying my work, like just my doodles and stuff from yeah. work. And then I show him like some paintings that I do at home. By 20, so it started in 2016. By 2017, I'm now starting to develop my own unique style like you can look at one of my pieces of work and i don't need to write my name on it for you to know that that's my work and that's something i always wanted to have out of art 
in 2018, now I'm developing that style a lot more. Um, Ange looks at my work, fucks with it. He likes it. Um, and then he is my first ever commission. So he's the first yeah. person to ever pay me to paint. <laughs> Can like, I ask you how much? Uh, yeah, at that point, it was like only like 50 bucks. Yeah. Like, but I mean... Price has definitely gone up since then. <laughs> but, like, but it's but, also kind of red. Yeah, it was red. Like, it was cool. It was, for me, it was like, oh, someone actually wants to pay that's crazy it is. 50 bucks just spend it on like beers probably <laughs> back then but like yeah it was dope <laughs> um and he really liked it man and then um he kept kind of like promoting me to like friends and all sorts so i got a few more commission pieces just off Him. his word yeah. yeah and when i look back at that piece right like i like it but i can tell how how young into this i was i'm still very young into this i'm in i've been in this for three years yeah and i fully intend to be doing this till i'm at least 80 yeah. so i'm 30 years i'm 30 years old now so i still have 50 years of doing this um but yeah man like 2019 is where it now gets a bit is that the first exhibition no 2018 was actually the first exhibition Let's 2018 talk about that was my first bit. exhibition um, right how does that really? happen because 2018 was my first exhibition <laughs> Bro, I'm bad with time sometimes. <laughs> no, it was. It was. I read. 2018. Yeah. I read somewhere, but I'm forgetting the date as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Between no, it was. 18 and 19. It was May 2018. So, um, so what happens is, yeah. Ange likes my work. Uh, at this point, we've probably sold about four commission pieces. Yeah. It, and in April 2018, like the first week of April, yeah. Ange is like, this is about three or four months now of Ange kind of me and Ange like really hanging out and getting yeah. to know each other better yeah um Ange has a friend who owns a studio yeah. in kind of West Melbourne which is like a kind of like a, a what kind of energy it's like a Camden energy yeah kind of like a Brooklyn energy that's that's the kind of area that that place is in yeah um so it's a dope ass studio and he's like yo bro we should go check out the studio I was like, uh, sorry, uh, gallery. And I was like, dope. Yeah. And um, you should meet my friend. I was like, sick. He's like, I really want you to do an exhibition soon. This is the first week of April. So I tell Ange, yeah. yeah, I mean, like one day probably. I might be ready in like November or something yeah. to do an exhibition. I'm not sure. And then uh, he's like, cool, cool. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Goes upstairs. We go chat to him. And there's a different exhibition on at that point. So I'm chatting to the artist yeah. whilst Ange is talking to his friend, Marco, the gallery owner. Yeah. Marco and him come back to me like 15 minutes later. And Marco's like, I love your work, man. Um, I'd love for you to do an exhibition. Six weeks to do it. I was like, six weeks? Bro? At this point, I've got like two <laughs> pieces of work, right? I have only have two pieces of actual artwork. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I needed... Well, I needed a lot more. I ended up having 33 pieces there. So in those six weeks, I painted 31, 31? pieces yeah. specifically for that exhibition. Yeah. All sorts of different sizes as well. And that's also... What was the name? Is that Love Home? Uh, no, that one was the More Love one. More Love. That more was love. More Love, yeah. I think I've seen pictures of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, More I Love have. was... A, it was dope because that, that was kind of like my tagline. Yeah. More Love was like yeah. kind of a thing yeah. that I that and i still do it i still do have more love as a part of my tagline yeah. uh, so 31 pieces in in six, six weeks. weeks yeah so that's where i learned off alex katz about painting six days a week six hours a day yeah. and at this point i'm still working my actual nine to five right <laughs> so i'm still painting those six hours but I, i'd wake up at 4 a.m paint till 7 and then go to work come back paint 6 p.m till 9 p.m yeah. every like it was more than six days for some of those parts because it had yeah. to be every day. There's no other option. Yeah. Um, so yeah, get there, manage to do it like through a few sick days in between then just to like really yeah. make sure that I'd finish. <laughs> and bro, the exhibition was like on a Saturday. It was a one day only thing, yeah. one day only event. So it's on a Saturday at like 2 p.m. Yeah. Trust me, my last painting was finished at like 12.30 p.m. <laughs> So the shit hasn't even been installed yet. We yeah. haven't even put it up yet. 
It so sounds finish like really chaotic. Super, super, <laughs> super, super. Uh, it's not like that these days. It's so different <laughs> these days. But yeah, finish that. Make my way to the to the gallery. We yeah. go buy like all the things that we actually need in order to like put it up, and manage. We as people are walking in, we're still putting we're up putting some of the final parts, and. I remember Marco say, saying, like, once you sell your first piece of art, you're going to get addicted to that feeling. And he was so again. right. And, and um, I was a bit nervous because you never want to have, like, a dud. Like, you never want to have an exhibition yeah, where nothing sells. And people come through and... And nothing sells. Um, yeah. So, on the right there, I was like, man, if I sell two paintings, I should be happy with that. Yeah. If I saw four paintings, I'll be gassed. If I saw like six, I'll be so Aesthetic. gassed, bro. Six? Six, bro? I was like, dude, I'm doing numbers. <laughs> um, and then, bro, I ended up selling 31 out of those 33 pieces. Damn, that's crazy. On my debut, yeah, which ended up becoming like the highest selling thing at, at, that, at that particular gallery at that, time. at that time. I don't know what they've done in the last three years or yeah, four years, four years. Uh, so that was sick that was very dope yeah, that's kind that of was crazy. encouraging <laughs> it was super encouraging considering like i'd only really sold my first commission piece about six months before that yeah um so it kind of got me like a little bit of buzz not like a huge amount but like a little bit like blogs and stuff and people were kind of oh, into wow. the creative stuff yeah who is this guy yeah yeah what it was about? interesting enough and then like by september i got offered another exhibition now it was a very different setting now this one was like in a very nice part of the cbd in a in a boutique hotel yeah so it went from yeah. like <laughs> this kind of downtown energy straight into almost corporate isn't it like, yeah almost like, yeah 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 for sure <laughs> and um uh, uh sorry it was 2019 i'm yeah. sorry it was 2019. 2019 it was 2019. Yeah. so at that point i sell no, I, I now have, like, it, it's a different setup, right? So it's yeah. it's less works. I think there was, like, 12 to 15 art pieces. Yeah. Standardly, what we're working with at the moment for Pikachu, for example, we'll yeah. get into Pikachu later, but, yeah. like, we usually work with, like, 15 to 20 pieces. So, yeah, it was, like, 12 to 15. And I sold, I think I sold three. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think I sold three. But, like, from the, the three I sold, right, yeah. were made more money than the 31 that 31. I'd sold, like, months earlier. Because, like, now it's charging, like, two grand and shit, or, like, one something, yeah. allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I was charging yeah. a, a, an increased amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that was a very dope exhibition. And that exhibition was, like, for an entire month. And they really put in a lot of effort into the opening night, like... In terms of the drinks they served, the snacks they served. So it was like my first experience with like a kind of higher like high end. end one. Yeah. yeah. And um, at this point, now I'm kind of seeing, okay, cool. I can kind of match my wage yeah. painting. And like I said, I fucking hated that job. So, so <laughs> um, kind of like gradually diluted through it. So instead of working five days a week, I started working four days a week, then three days a week. Then eventually I quit. Yeah. And I quit and came to Zim for a stint for like a sabbatical. I came here for like three months. Yeah. And that's where I started kind of discussing the ideas of an art gallery yeah. with my family and stuff. So when you came here, did you have that in mind or what was, what was the thinking when you were coming back? In um, the thinking was just to see Zim and like reconnect with family. Because yeah. uh, when I moved to Australia, I moved there by myself. Well, like my older oh. brother was there, but he was there for two years. So by the time yeah. I turned 18, he he wasn't there anymore. So I, I, I just kind of wanted to reconnect with family a bit. Yeah. And yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, quit my job, came here. Um, it was mostly just to see whether, in fact, no, I didn't even think Zim would be viable at that point. Yeah. I, it was mostly just to see my family and then my yeah. family kind of <laughs> showed me concepts of things that we could achieve here yeah. or do here yeah and yeah so i bought into it really 
And this is what, 2020 now? Uh, this is 2019 still. 2019 still. And then I go back <laughs> to Oz, like, January 2020. Yeah. Is when I went back to Oz, I'm pretty sure. Man, my dates are shit, eh? I'm sorry about that. Yeah, my dates fine. are trash. <laughs> <laughs> you could always put up, like, an asterisk. Yeah. Like, actual dates. But yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter yeah. that much. It was, it was a time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I go back to Oz, and then I'm set on moving here. Um, whilst I'm in Aus- I'm, I know that I'm moving here probably by More March was the idea to move here by March. Yeah. And then the whole COVID thing yeah. happened. <laughs> um, so I had one more exhibition, which was called Going Home, which was my last exhibition. In Austin. Really? No, in general. That's the last oh, exhibition I've had. Since, oh, since okay. COVID? I haven't yeah. had a, an exhibition since COVID. So yeah. that was March 17th. That exhibition was very dope. That exhibition was sick. Uh, it was at this opera singer's house. So we really got to curate the space exactly yeah, how we wanted. Yeah, it sounds very interesting. Yeah, and it was like a collab exhibition with um, with this artist called Bonnie Jean Whitlock, who is an incredible surrealist artist. Yeah. So it was me and her, and um, it was my farewell thing as well, right? And it had this opera singer, had like some some students that she teaches who ended up like... Yeah, singing for us as well. So it was a great experience yeah, and moment. Sounds... And um, because it was my farewell thing, it was a little bit emotional. But yeah. so March 17th is when that exhibition is. <laughs> and I'm meant to fly out like, I think five days later is when yeah. we're meant to fly out. But COVID really kicks in and then Australia shuts its borders, <laughs> I think on March 19th. <laughs> <laughs> So now I can't leave. Yeah. And I was in Australia till like November 28th, 29th. I was in Australia. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, for those months, I couldn't really do exhibitions and stuff, but yeah. I was painting a lot. I was painting so much. So I was mostly surviving off commissions and also, um, yeah, just staying at home because I was in Melbourne and Melbourne had the longest lockdown in the, on the planet that yeah. year. And it had a very strict one. Like you couldn't yeah. go past five Obviously, kilometers. Kind of, yeah, you're only allowed outside like once a day. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, um, you weren't know. allowed to have visitors and stuff. Which was, honestly, it was a great time for me. Really? Um, creatively. Mm-hmm. Like I had, I had such a good time in that period where I feel I kind of really leveled up and just had time and space to just focus on art um, fully. I leveled up musically as well. Yeah. so much in just that that lockdown period um so yeah end up doing that till november december and then move here to zim december yeah. 2012 oh, landed here november 29th yeah 2020 yeah. yeah and been here since then today's september 28th 2022 so yeah yeah, yeah man, a, that's that's interesting it's been a stint and so now we're going to talk about we we've established how you got in yeah. Uh, before we actually move in, uh, move on to your like art style. Um, yeah. There's a period I want to like go back to a bit. Um, yeah. When you were quitting your jobs and jumping in between jobs before you had established yourself yeah. as an artist, like how was your family receiving that? Because that can be like a really stressful thing. Um. Yeah. I think I've stressed out my family a lot <laughs> <laughs> for many a, a long time. Uh, I'm just yeah. I'm quite. Obviously, the career path I've chosen and what I'm doing these days is quite unconventional. Yeah. Um, so there are often concerns about, like, what does your future look like or whatever. Yeah. Um, when I was quitting my jobs, yeah, they weren't that happy with it because they couldn't understand why, right? Yeah, right. But I, I absolutely i am so grateful that I quit those jobs, man. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine still being not just at those places, right, but, like, still doing that kind of work. Yeah. I, I really can't imagine it. Um, like, yeah. I, yeah, wow. That's... <laughs> yeah, it's an yeah. understandable Bit thing. of PTSD there for sure. <laughs> 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 like the flashbacks have coming you, in like a... Like, like you weren't there, <laughs> man. You weren't there. <laughs> have you seen that meme of a dog? And there's yeah, like more yeah. images. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it, bro. Honestly, some of that shit kind of felt like Nam, bro. <laughs> I can I, I see the vision. I see the vision, bro. <laughs> you weren't there, man. <laughs> um, yeah, it's but complex. no, like I mean, I get 
where my family is coming from but yeah. like for a long time in my life i haven't necessarily believed in compromising who i am as a human being for the sake of anyone yeah. including my family yeah um yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's just, just it's it, just how it i perceive it yeah it's just how i perceive my existence um i i just i just know that i want to live my life as authentically as possible you yeah. only get to do this life thing once yeah. and i want to do it as much as i want to do it you know what yeah. i mean like i want to do as much as i can and want to do and it takes time bro, though bro it just takes time for like people to see the value in what you're doing and now they do yeah. right but like years ago <laughs> they didn't but now they they genuinely do like my dad especially is the one who surprises me with like yeah. how much more knowledge he has about art at the moment <laughs> considering like he was the science guy growing up or like yeah. the math guy the numbers guy right yeah. and it's not like he sees the he, it's not like i can show him a marth rothko piece and he can be like yeah that's 40 million dollars yeah it's not necessarily that but like he 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 loves the the aspect of value in that he loves the financial aspect of value in yeah. art <laughs> which is fine it's a great oh, compromise enough, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. stylistically he now under he does understand the necessity the, the necessity for style yeah. because um in order to reach those kind of levels bro you have to have your own style yeah. you have to create your own world because thousands of tens of thousands maybe even close to a hundred thousand of artists can paint yeah. you exactly how you look. I can paint you exactly how you look anyway. Like, yeah. but it's, it's not, there's a difference. And this is, <laughs> there's a difference between a good artist and a good painter. So, Break it down for me. <laughs> so there's many, many good painters. And yeah. now through my experience as a curator here, I, I understand that Zimbabweans are very much into that, that yeah. realism style. Realism. I can name at least 10 guys who could paint the exact same looking painting. Yeah. So it's dope. It's, it is impressive. It is a skill that I have respect for. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't necessarily say it's yours, right? Like you, yeah. you still have to write your name at the bottom of that yeah. just for me to clock that that's your piece. And I can't necessarily... Like one thing that I really... Like, I won't say it annoys me. Yeah but it's oversaturated within the arts industry here. And I also yeah. understand why it is saturated yeah. that way, <laughs> but like wildlife paintings and things like that is so saturated. Mm. And that's because that's what tourists buy. Yeah. And that's why it is it's the way it is. It's a piece of Africa. Yeah, it's a piece of <laughs> Africa, but it's also like these artists still need to eat at the end of the day. Yeah. So like, this is what's selling. So that's what they're going to do. Yeah. That makes sense to me. That's the product that's going to sell. That makes so much sense to me. Yeah. But um, it's not something that I'd necessarily ever put into a gallery or things like that yeah i put it in a tourist shop for sure but like um what what i'm trying to achieve creatively is that kind of legacy that like after i'm dead people still know that yeah that was a basket piece yeah 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 and and my dad's getting to that point now which is dope like he he, he can understand. tell the difference between a good painter and a good artist yeah that's really dope. And I guess for being a good artist, so I've explained what a good painter is, right? Yeah. The good painters are also like what the schooling system teaches you. And they, they're the ones you can yeah. actually grade out of 100% because you know what that 100% is meant to look like. Yeah. And this was like 90% there or 60% there. But like a good artist, and it's not limited to paint. It's like the storytelling that we touched on earlier. But a good artist yeah. is someone who can create a unique world and for a particular reason to communicate or a story yeah. or a concept that's for me what a good artist that's is good and artist that's is. what i look for as a curator um i want someone who can yeah like express something break it down distort it and still send that message through that's that's the shit that blows my mind that's the shit yeah. i fucking love yeah. and um, yeah, I can paint you how you look, but I choose not to. It's not just because of, I, 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 it's, I don't see, I don't see as much creative value in it. Yeah. And I also hate the process of doing it. It takes so long <laughs> and it's so frustrating. Yeah. And 
the end result for me personally is usually not worth not as interesting the yeah yeah, because bro i'm not i'm not painting in order to have a bad time right i want to have a good time painting as well so yeah i hear you man yeah i I think i hear you yeah and so you touched on storytelling there Mm. what stories are you trying to tell with with your art with my art um my art does touch on multiple different um topics and stuff right yeah. so it, it's described as neo expressionist pop art yeah so the neo expressionism is through the concepts the pop art is through the the style and the and the colors right yeah. um i think the main thing i'm always trying to present to people is the duality of existence so when you look at my art a lot of the time the the faces or the figures they're muted nearly yeah. all the time like they don't have an expression yeah i i consider that a muted expression yeah. some people consider it sad or they they look sad <laughs> that's fine that's just it's open that's, to interpretation it's, it's open to you <laughs> i'll tell you what i'm doing you you can say yeah but like it, it looks sad and if they say it looks sad that's fine as well right because the colors certainly don't. Yeah. So the colors really pop colorful. out exactly, and the pop, they the colors are so specifically chosen through certain studies that I did through like human psychology, yeah. through marketing, from my from my master's degree. So those colors are meant to they usually tap into something within your childhood. Yeah. Hopefully the happier moments. So things like, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, so things like ice cream and candy and things like that is what people usually say they get from those colors, right? Yeah. But the, 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 the actual figure is muted yeah. or sad. So it's happy colors and sad expression. Oh, so that's the, that's the kind of duality and juxtaposition that's being created there. Yeah. And then from that as a base, we then explore different themes of like love, heartbreak, victory, um all sorts of things mm. yeah political things non-political stuff also can also just do like just touching on pop culture like repainting certain pop icons and stuff yeah, yeah so um it, it it's just about the duality of life man because no matter what nothing is ever absolute yeah. one thing yeah it's always going to be different narratives happening so of gray yeah a lot of gray man a lot of so much of that yeah so um that's what i'm trying to do with my art and the people who get it they so get sick it. the people who don't get it cool too bro like uh, well. like i, I think know that's the absolute you're talking about isn't it yeah yeah not yeah. everyone will get it not everyone will get it bro <laughs> and that's fine and um there's this alex katz right i love alex katz yeah. um he's he's one of the few artists from that time who is still alive um he's like 80 something now yeah. still painting in new york and he had this one thing that really stuck with me once he's like he doesn't believe in bad art um it's uh, there's good art and there's art that you don't understand yeah yeah so yeah. usually you'll find people <laughs> like you'll, you'll find like people will trash like music or whatever yeah if they don't get it but you'll find the fans of that music will fucking love they're, that. They're and like, this is like it. the crazy, like some people might even cry over that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you can't really say that, that that music is objectively bad, right? It, it's about how it, it connects to you. And that's what yeah. art is to yeah. me as well. Like there'd be certain art that I can trash that someone else might be like, no, that's, no, that's actually just, pretty dope. Yeah, I just don't get it. Yeah. And it might not be my time to get it, bro. Like Van Gogh lived in a time where his environment didn't get him. Yeah. And now he's like, he's Van Gogh. He's Van Gogh. So much after after he died. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That that is, that is. Even, and that also happened with Basquiat, man. Like I know Basquiat was big and he was big when he was alive, but museums didn't rate him. Yeah. When he was alive. Yeah. And now (laughs) he's. Levels to it now. Exactly. Bro, like he's the highest selling American artist of all time like in terms of a single piece right yeah. he sold uh, a piece of his sold a few years ago for like 111 million dollars that's the highest not just for an african-american artist for any american yeah. ever to sell art so yeah that's 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 crazy yeah. and so you mentioned something interesting there uh about how the you got the idea of colors 
mm. from marketing uh, during yeah that's mba yeah 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 what else do you think uh, from mba or just school in general is reflected in my work yeah that you can consciously see because sometimes there's a lot of like subconscious influence right yeah but yeah, that's that right. you can consciously um consciously yeah. i think my choice of figures like choosing to paint people yeah is definitely something that um i learned from from that so i learned about colors from that and i learned about colors from studying andy warhol i did andy warhol as a as a case study thing for an assignment because oh. that's what he was doing so andy warhol studied not formally right but like just from going through supermarkets and stuff he just studied what were like consistencies around him so he studied um ordinary objects and studied studied like their color palettes and what they choose and like yeah. how red might red like triggers you to want to take action so a lot of my early work does feature a fair bit of red because i wanted you to at least notice it yeah. um and I just kept studying Andy Warhol a bit later on and more of his palettes. And that's, that's what inspires most of my palettes to this day is, is the colors that he figured would work yeah. well together and stuff. Um, what else from, I mean, from the degree, I guess, just having good relations with people, like good relations go a long way in, in terms of like converting sales yeah and recommendations and word of mouth and yeah. and word of mouth is still the most effective form of marketing yeah. in terms of like uh people trusting that source it's not the quickest but it is the most like long standing for yeah. like other opportunities yeah. to come up so really i just learned how to be i mean i i have been a nice guy for like my a long time yeah but uh i just learned how to navigate that enough in a business way for networking and relations and future connections yeah. i think there's value in nearly every single human being and there's especially value i'll say in every single creative yeah so i love hanging out with creatives because there's always something that we can collab on or yeah yeah create further yeah what's clear now is you didn't go to art school nah or no, I did not. Yet. <laughs> I don't know. What no, I did not. Are, right? uh, yeah. So I actually got into, uh, kind of got into art school. Yeah. Um, but I did that late. So by the time I was, by the time I kind of quit my job, uh, I figured, oh, I may as well go to art school, right? Yeah. And that was right before I, I flew to Zim and then got, yeah, mm. sold on to moving here. Yeah um so that's why i didn't end up going to art school later on yeah but um yeah art school i don't know man art school is an interesting one um because i do i i i'm self-taught and i love yeah. being self-taught yeah um because everything i'm like i didn't go to art school but i still teach myself about art yeah. consistently yeah. consistently like there isn't a single day really where i don't go and learn about something like looking into one of some old artist from like the 1820s probably or like the movement around that person or learning about yeah. the medici family and things like that or even just learning about like the stuff that happens right now like seeing what kanye's going through with where he's trying to take his art yeah. um seeing the stuff that virgil abloh did there's at least every single day there'll be something like childish gambino tyler the creator yeah um i'm constantly compulsively looking for for just more information yeah. around that and i know that art school would not have been able to necessarily give me that, that. they wouldn't yeah. tell me about like t like what well, the art school i was interested in going to they wouldn't necessarily tell me about tyler or virgil or blah 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 yeah. but yeah. <laughs> what they could have done is is the main reason some of my friends who are good artists now um the reasons they say they went to art school is the connections which makes sense because art school, what it will do for you, it will prep you into how to approach a gallery, which galleries to approach, mm. um, how to price your work, those kind of like practical things, right? Yeah. And also just how to create and how to like, they challenge you, which I love. Um, I, I used to go to my friends' 
uh, studios at their school, right? And see the works that they'd be working on and how those teachers can help you develop your style further and quicker. That's cool. But still, I don't feel, I'll never, I don't, I don't really feel like I've ever missed out on much. And I more than likely wouldn't go to art school yeah. now moving forward. Yeah. Um, but I do totally understand it. And it, it, it it's a very, very, very important thing to have in our society, like yeah. art schools. Yeah. Um, maybe one day I might open an art school. I don't know. When yeah. I'm like 50, 60, I don't know. God willing, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. spoken to. Yeah. You're spoken yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were saying you, you last... Um, Exhibited in 2020. Yeah, March 2020. Like a proper exhibition, yeah. 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 Um, and then now you're a curator. Yeah. So I'll try to like tie these questions together as best as I can. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, what are some of the things you look out for when you're going into such a setting? Like what are some of the things that you should be thinking about when you're about to exhibit? Yeah, that's a good question, approach? right? Um, there are multiple things to yeah. that. But I'll tell you what the primary thing is. Yeah. I, I need to look at the piece of work and do I like it? That's, so that's the curator's that's, perspective? Yeah. That's, that's just my general perspective. Even when I was like, before I'd reached this oh, level. Oh, even with your work, is like, do yeah. I like this enough to put it up? Yeah, yeah. Even before I reached this level, even before I like even started painting. Because like before I started painting in 2016, yeah. I was still going to galleries and stuff a lot. Like from like 20... 12, 13, I was yeah. going to galleries a lot and going to see shit and just being like, do I like it? And then the question that comes after that is, why do I like it? And then if I don't like it now, like since Alex Katz's thing, if I don't like it is, what am I not getting from it? Yeah. Um, and then it just, so that's the primary question. And then it just splits between those two, yes or no. And then you just explore why. Um, but really what I am looking for as a curator is something unique. Yeah. Um, something unique. You can do realism, right? You can definitely do realism and keep it unique. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 it's always a bit dicey sometimes when I'm chatting about realism because some people think I'm dissing those yeah, artists, yeah. but I'm people not. People take you personally. I'm just, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, what I, yeah, I, I just want to see the artist in that work. I need that human experience from looking at your work. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Pikicha Gallery. Yes, um, sir. Yes, sir. What problem are we trying to solve there? Um, we're trying to... The main problem I'm trying to solve is accessibility. That was, like, that was my main vision. Yeah. And that's accessibility for both audience and creatives. So, with audience-wise, yeah. um, especially Zimbabwe... A lot of people don't get art to, yeah, a lot of people don't get art. I'll just leave it at that. And it's not a bad thing. It's just like, it's an exposure thing. Yeah. And it's also an accessibility thing. I'm not saying that like the other galleries here aren't accessible to get to or yeah. go to see. What I'm saying is in terms of accessibility, I want always free entry. Um, I want you to be able to even meet the artist yeah. as much as possible. I want affordability. I want flexibility on payment because yeah. that's another reason, bro. Like some people feel like they can't afford art before they even know the price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's generally that conception. I was talking yeah. to um, Peter Kawunda, artillery. Yeah, Gallery, shout out. And <laughs> what a guy, what a man. We were talking, yeah, he's a fantastic yeah. guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we were talking and I was telling you, I'm like, man, my perception is... So do them that. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. just what I think. Exactly. It's not what you know, but it's what you think, right? Because I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I mean, it's, it, it's going to take years. And one thing I do love about the community here, yeah. like you mentioned Peter, there's also Marcus at First Floor. Yeah. Uh, there's also National Gallery and there's all the other creators. What I do love is, I'm not necessarily, I don't feel like I'm coming in here and being like, you guys then those guys are actual pioneers and those yeah. guys are some of my main influences, right? Yeah. Um, I'm just saying we don't have many spaces. So I'm just opening Let's an extra space. As many as you can. Let's just have as many as we can. Yeah. And we are, we are a, a close community 
already. So like Peter's come through Pikachu, Marx has come through Pikachu. Yeah. I've gone to artillery. I'm actually going to artillery probably this afternoon or tomorrow yeah. as well to see Joseph Mugabe's work. Yeah. Because um, I haven't seen that one yet. Johnson. Johnson, uh, Johnson Mugabe. Mugabe. Yeah, sorry. that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I, went to, I went to see that. Yeah. He's, he's brilliant. Yeah. Man. Nah. And um, yeah, and then going to like the, the first floor thing for Troy on Thursday. So just collaborating as much as we can. We can. And that's what make, creates more accessibility. Because yeah. like if, John, uh, if, if Johnson's there, if Troy is there, maybe you might fit in Pikachu if we don't have anyone. Mm. But like, you know what I mean? Like um, doing more and more things and just opening a space where like the creatives can also come and pitch what their ideas are. And one thing we're doing with Pikachu is that it's, it's beyond... The, con the the primary concept of art, like when usually when you tell people about art, they think paintings, right? Yeah. So we do paintings, we do photography, photography yeah. um, we do auctions, we do uh, music as well, we do poetry, yeah, I was we do stand-up comedy, Kuda Kuda, Rice? Kuda Rice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was do stand-up comedy, like um, we're going to have like a, a film premiere, a documentary premiere. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, in a few that. weeks that that should be sick that's happening october 29th it's about like skateboarding culture in zimbabwe yeah i'll definitely come through for that yeah so yeah. i did want to have a space where like multiple creatives can just do can just express themselves express themselves like yeah see what we can do together right um and yeah so it's it's a multidisciplinary space yeah. is what pikachu is and that's not necessarily a problem, but it is a gap to fill. Yeah. Um, also, in terms of its location, it's in Helensvale. So there wasn't much else that I was aware of going on in Helensvale creatively. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, I think that's a fair thing to say because <laughs> yeah. since Pikicha has opened, I've been there. Up to those in ends the, a bit more, in the right? Last, in the last, like, let's just say 12 months, I've been yeah. there maybe five times, right? Okay. Prior to that. Let's clean I, that up uh, as well, right? In the, in the last 12 <laughs> months since Pikicha opened. You've been there five times, right? Yeah. And Pikachu only opened uh, two and a bit months ago. So exactly. So, so two and a bit months you've been more, there. Yeah. It's more that. More exactly. maybe two and a half months. I've been there maybe four or five times, right? Exactly. Before that, maybe I was there two other times in Magumeni. Yeah. 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 And man. Yeah. Two other times, essentially. Man, with Pikachu, like, some of the stuff we're about to do this next quarter, right? I'm so gassed. Like, <laughs> I'm just gassed, You're about bro. to knock it out the park? Yeah. So, like, we now also have, like, a like a corporate agreement with Heineken. Yeah. Which just gives us a lot more... more. I want to say resources. flexibility. Yeah, resources, but also just a, a lot more incentive to do stuff. Yeah. To like be active. Like it's not just going to be like you're coming here once in a month or something. No, there's yeah. going to be like something going on pretty much th every Thursday to Sunday, Sunday there in the same space. There could be different things going on. Yeah. Like even if uh, we're going to like, especially with Heineken. So like I'm a massive football fan yeah. and football's <laughs> art to me. <laughs> what team do you support? Um, I, was, I was born, I was born and raised in an Arsenal family. Yeah. Oh, but I will say Ajax, Napoli, <laughs> Arsenal. I'm Napoli as well. I, yeah, I've got, I've got a Diego Maradona Napoli tattoo right there. Uh, but like in terms of, yeah, I support Arsenal. I'll say that in terms of the easiest I'll thing. I'll forgive you but, because you're Napoli. Because I'm wearing like a Man U jersey. Right yeah, now, yeah, so. no. But like you guys, are now, you guys are now coached by like one of my, my favorite, favorite people coaches. ever, bro. Ten Hag. <laughs> greatest Ajax coach. Yeah. Bro, no. <laughs> You see, that's the thing as well, right? Like in the in the in the football group chat, we go again. Yeah. The football group chat, people always like taking the piss out of me because of how many teams I support or follow. I'll say I follow. I support three teams, but I follow maybe like eight. Like I follow Madrid. Fair enough, man. I I, I'm Madrid. I'm yeah. Napoli. I'm Man yeah. United first. Yeah. Napoli, Madrid. Yeah. Um, which other league is there? Yeah. Because that's Italy, Spain, England. Yeah. Ah, France, I have nothing, man. I'm just yeah. anti PSG. You're yeah, anti, yeah. fair enough. I'm following I'm, Messi I, I, there. I like Neymar. Yeah. I really love Neymar. Yeah. But I, I just don't like PSG. Yeah. How about yeah. Messi, though? No? I'm a hater, man. I'm CR7. Yeah, fair like, enough. 
He's brilliant. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a hater. No, no, I get that. <laughs> like Messi is the goat, but Cristiano is my goat. But exactly. Messi's the goat. But Cristiano, I, I, like in I, terms of the player exactly. that I like, that's, the player. That's yeah. definitely how it is for me. It's yeah. like I. The reason I started supporting Man United is yeah. because of Cristiano. Before that, I was like, Chelsea, Madrid, I was all yeah, over the place. And then yeah, Cristiano yeah, yeah. came through, I was like... Brought bro. some stability in your life. Like, ah, yeah, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is the one. I, yeah. I found B1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. Uh, no, 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 keep it going. <laughs> but yeah, you were talking about, let's go back to Heineken. And uh, yes, doing a so bunch obviously of Heineken sponsor... <laughs> champions league right so yeah. we're gonna have champions league nights in there yeah and then we're dope. planning a bunch of like big world cup events throughout because this is also December. yeah because this is the southern hemisphere's first ever summer world cup man yeah. that's huge that's huge for us that is massive for us that's gonna that's be so fun. lit so um yeah definitely emma gumeni jack bauer pikachu it's gonna be lit yeah this popping. next quarter is gonna be popping for sure great and man. beyond for sure like yeah. there's so many announcements that i can't say yeah. but like yeah next year is looking lit <laughs> we'll, as well. we'll talk about that yeah. off, off, when the off time the comes <laughs> yeah when the time comes <laughs> and uh, yeah and like this sunday we're having the the tattoo festival as well yeah. zimbabwe's first ever tattoo festival how did, so. how, how did that come up because that's uh, like really creative and i know you bring in like a Bunch yeah of so like in that field yeah so obviously i'm like covered in tattoos right yeah. um i've got like over 40 at the moment and i kind of had that idea of eventually like i'm buying myself a tattoo gun for christmas so i can yeah. start really tattooing properly yeah. and i've kind of had the idea of having a tattoo shop for a while and then my cousin kind of got into that idea as well yeah. but then really it was my brother um, in terms of this festival, who initiated this entire festival idea. Yeah. And he has no tattoos at all. He probably will never get any tattoos yeah. either. But um, he gets the vision and he was into the idea of exploring something different and a subculture yeah. and growing something different, like growing the community. Because like tattoos are slightly taboo here. Yeah. Well, they're pretty taboo. Not slightly. Yeah, they are taboo. They are? Right. Yeah. <laughs> outrightly. <laughs> yeah, they are rightly I mean, like, some of the feedback we've had about, like, this festival, people like, this is satanic. Yeah, exactly. I can't believe they're even hosting it on a Sunday. Like, what? Blah, blah, blah. But, um... <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> yeah. oh, so you guys are, like, hosting it on, like, the most sacred day. On Jesus' too. day, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jesus I can I can get why people wouldn't like fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> I'm, not yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna It's just the difference of I, I guess, opinion and perspective, right? And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, just, and and it's fun. It's, it's fun, fun, yeah. And I think um I think like the tattoo culture in Zim is growing. Yeah. Um there's definitely like a lot of people who ask me where I get where I got my tattoos and if any have been done in Zim. Yeah. And I've had five in Zim so far. And um, so the idea came from from my brother, and we've spent the last five weeks, five to six weeks, probably just working on it yeah. and getting it all ready. So um, another thing about it is like one thing about tattoo culture yeah. from the people I've experienced globally who are tattooed, yeah. they're some of the most open people and some of the least judgmental people. Yeah. So very open minded. Very open minded and very like just keen to just hang and just yeah. connect. <laughs> so we realized as well, like, uh, we gotta have things for those people who aren't gonna get tattooed that day. So we have henna, we've got sip and paint, yeah, we have makeup, body art, piercings. Yeah. So yeah, like try and music as well. Like you can really you can also just come to Emma Gumeni and just chill. Yeah. <laughs> just just soak in the vibe. Yeah, just soak in the vibe. Exactly. Exactly. But um yeah, man, we got some of the hottest DJs performing. I'm so gassed for that. Um uh, so regardless, it's gonna be a fun day and just yeah. a cool Sunday to have. And if you want a new tough sticker, come get one then. Like, yeah. But dope, um dope, dope, dope. Yeah, so Heineken's in partnership with that because of the Pikachu space as well. So uh yeah, it's it's we're exploring what we're trying to do at the moment is explore urban culture or just yeah. different culture, yeah. cool culture. Yeah. And so for me, stuff like that is like really intriguing. Yeah. Um, because like I don't have a tattoo myself. Yeah. But just 
Which one? Un uncharted territory. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uncharted territory. Yeah, that's it. I I might I don't think I would. I'm more of a piercing guy. Okay, that's, cool. Yeah, yeah I see you got that one yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's really more yeah. my thing. Yeah. But I mean, life is long. That's yeah. one of the things um, I've I've realized. Yeah. Uh, when you're cold, you're cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so so you might like feel like yeah. you're anti something today. I'm not even anti, but it's not something I have right now. Mm -hmm. But something one day might lead down that path. So yeah. But yeah. I'm not like one of those people who are like fervently against it. I. Mm. It's not on me. Yeah. My <laughs> so. family hates it, bro. It's understandable, my man. My parents really, hate it. We're still quite yeah. conservative. Yeah, super so, conservative. Like yeah, when my parents. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my dad doesn't even know yet that I'm doing a tattoo <laughs> festival. <laughs> we're, we're, like, really conservative. I still yeah. have people who, like, see me with, with, with earrings and they lose their shit. Yeah. Uh, well, they don't lose their shit, but they're, like, a bit uncomfortable. They're like, yeah, are, like you, are, are you... Are you sus? Are you that? always going... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, worse when I had, like, blonde hair and then... Yeah, dude. Oh, I get that. Oh, my then, gosh. Uh, and then you'd get into town. <laughs> yeah, people just couldn't handle that. They're Bro. Like, I okay, remember he's definitely sus, you know. So I used to have a, I used to have like blue hair. Yeah. I used to have blue hair and a septum piercing yeah. and current tats and people were like, he's that basketball player, Dennis Rodman. Ah, oh, yeah. My family was exactly. trolling, like my brothers exactly. were trolling me. Dennis about Rodman, that. Like, yeah. that's the one I got as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. Triple C like, say, so, so, yeah, so yeah. stuff like that where it's yeah. just really, it's just hair at the end of the day. It's like, yeah. it's not a big deal. But exactly. people are still, I guess, navigating how they. Yeah perceive stuff like that yeah and, and the more of us who do this right the more the next generations are just be that, like, oh, I guess that's what cool. it is for yeah. me sometimes where there's now nowadays i might even just go back to like blonde just as a statement just to like push those boundaries yeah to be like yeah, yeah i'm a go pretty super sensible saying, guy bro. yeah <laughs> i'm like i'm a pretty sensible guy yeah but i'm also blonde yeah it yeah can, that can those things can like exist in one yeah. person it doesn't have to be taboo dude like it's like zim this is one thing that i find so funny about zim as well yeah. like it's it's conservative enough and i find this mostly like in terms of like the black culture really yeah but like being a black man who wears shorts like i wear shorts like all the time people are like bro you need to put some pants on yeah like, so, 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 so it's two things right it's, it's hot bro it's conservatism <laughs> and then it's also like insecurity to mm. some degree like we're really mm -hmm. not just comfortable with who, who we, we are, are right so yeah. it's, it's if you want to get a tattoo but yeah. someone doesn't approve yeah why does it matter that they and, don't and, approve? and that's because like obviously we got our identity stripped away through like the colonial yeah we're still like colonization we're thing, still yeah. really trying to like to even define what our identity is um and that's something that i should mention about pikachu that's yeah. like the stamping on what it means to be zimbabwean yes yeah. african but in particular zimbabwean right um is something that i'm really 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 into um because likewise man. i think <laughs> we have we need we need we need we are the only ones who can define our identity yeah. instead of like waiting for other people to tell yeah. us like what's right or wrong like yeah. I, I i get so frustrated when i ask like my parents or something like why can't i do that or like why can't and they would be like and the reference is like a foreign thing or yeah or like that. the response is like because you can't like that's just the way it is like that's not a good <laughs> like, enough response right? yeah, like, like, like things should be able to stand up to yeah. question yeah 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 like almost like logically like exactly you should be able to like map out why something shouldn't it exist happens. yeah right? like why it is yeah. bad or why it is good exactly you know? and <laughs> we should be able to define that for ourselves not yeah. like defining a lot of those tropes come from like yeah the colonial times man yeah and we're like very yeah. in, and i don't like no offense to like british people yeah but they're kind of like like really square yeah 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 and, and I guess that works for them. Yeah. It's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. But for us, man, it's like it's yeah, it's 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 a I don't uh, want it's an important yeah, like, it's I don't an important care about that, that stuff. Exactly, bro. Like, bro, why am I, bro, going kumusha, right? Going to kumusha in summer on a Sunday. Yeah. You're gonna see some geezers wearing, wearing suits suit. and, and drinking tea. And you're like, what? bro, it's hot, bro. That's not you, bro. It's so. Well, I mean, hard, I get. Bro. I don't get to define who you are. But yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. So like, that seems uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> and obviously, like, it, it's inevitable. Like, our colonial history is always going to be a, yeah, a part, a part of, of what our future identity yeah. is. Yeah. Um, 
I guess I just, it's our generation really at the forefront right now that has the opportunity to, to define, yeah. yeah, to really challenge and define what like our future is going to be. What it looks like. Like what the future, yeah. what the generation of Zimbabweans we're going to raise are going to be like. Yeah. Um, I think we're doing a good job. Yeah, I think we're half decent. I think we're all right. I think we're... In fact, I'm going to stop speaking there. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, these streets ain't safe, bro. Streets ain't Let's safe, say bro. something. But yeah, I think, you know, that's... That's everything, man. Yeah? That's, that's everything I have right now. Yeah. I think in, in a perfect world, I'd love to be able to do this maybe every five, ten years. Mm. Mm, we do this again... On camera, of course, like off camera, of course. Bro, we'll lucky enough, we meeting. live in that world, bro. We can <laughs> definitely do this every five exactly. to ten. Exactly, <laughs> but, you know, just five to ten years, um, retrospectively looking at the things we've done since we last talked, you know, yeah. just, just that growth and just... And it's mad, like, certain things that we mentioned today, right? We're yeah. going to see that pan out in, like, five years. Like, the interview you referenced from yeah, 2020, that's, that's, that was before Pikachu was exactly. the thing. <laughs> and, and in fact, there's one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now yeah. that you mentioned that, yeah. in that interview, you mentioned that um, you wanted to... Brushes and paints. Brushes, get into like your own Basco brushes. Basco brushes, Basco paints, paints, yeah. yeah. How's yeah. that going? Um, so, paints, it's going okay. It's yeah. not going, like, I kind of, it is, it is an idea of mine and something yeah. that will be executed i just haven't had enough time to Dude. give it as yet yeah. but um the concept really you know tom's remember tom's shoes yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. so uh one of the concepts is paint is if you don't know what you're doing here in harare paint is ridiculously expensive like um people will absolutely rip you off <laughs> like and when i say people yeah. i mean the stores and when I say the stores, <laughs> I mean the stores usually up north of Zamora yeah. will absolutely rip you off. I won't say the names names, yeah. but like <laughs> those ones will absolutely rip you off. Uh, make a killing. <laughs> yeah. No, their profit margins are silly. So um, I know that the that paint that you need in order to make the kind of work that I do, essentially yeah. what I will be providing is the kind of paint that I'll use. Yeah. So it'll be the exact same and... My idea w with that was to make paint more accessible for like schools, which makes it more accessible for students, yeah. which also like for general artists as well. And kids who just want to do, or like parents who want their kids to do to something start. other than stare at a screen all day, right? Yeah. Um, and the brushes obviously come with that. Again, very affordable to make and doesn't have to sell at a crazy profit. But like the thing about it, because it's such a passion project of mine, yeah. um, the thing about like, Tom. So Tom's Shoes was this espadrille company from like early 2010s or whatever, or late 2000s. Yeah. But if you bought a pair, they'll donate a pair to like some kids who, who can't have shoes, right? Ooh, yeah. Because that's the kind of margin they were making. So like that's essentially the same kind of thing I want. I want like, make. okay, if you buy this paint, it'll go to a kid who can't afford paint. Yeah. yeah. So it'll go to like, um, there's this art center in Gweru. Uh, run by this dude called Keith Zender. Yeah. He's actually our next exhibition. And he pretty much goes around looking for downtrodden kids, so like even street kids or disabled kids, and yeah. teaches them how to paint so wow. that they can have not just like something to do, but like potentially something they can monetize yeah. within a few years. So yeah, it'll go That's to... Really yeah, so go to more of those kind of art centers and those kind of community projects yeah. where um, give those... Kind, bro, because... Um, it's you there must be multiple dope ass artists kumusha yeah they just they don't just even don't know it and they the just don't even they don't have the, the paint they don't have the canvas they don't have all of that but that's yeah. that's my dream like yeah. to to be able to connect more of those communities with creation yeah and and a source of their own income because like just for myself being an independent artist across just these last few years, really, yeah. it's been the most fulfilling thing I've ever experienced. Um, it's been tough. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's been stressful and frustrating bits, but I'm, I'm so, so, so happy, bro. Like, I've never been this happy in my life. Yeah. And being able to give people like that uh, a, shot. a shot, bro, or, yeah, just 
the opportunity to have their own self-sufficiency yeah. in that way or like just for them to not even just on even a monetary it, value yeah. just, just explore it exploring <laughs> and i feel that those stories are so important like the stories from people there are so important and there's only so much you can translate through talking to someone yeah. there's only so much you can translate through music there's only yeah. so much you can translate through painting that's why I like the all the different Every mediums you can explore important. we'll explore those concepts and your energies and your and your actual spirit and soul yeah. in different ways yeah, yeah. No, man. so no that's, that's definitely amazing. happening that's definitely happening basco brushes basco paints that's absolutely happening for sure fantastic yeah. man i'm yeah. super thankful for you were coming through. Uh, thank uh, you, bro. We only met this... like a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now we're having like a real in-depth one conversation. One and a half hour conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, shout but out, yeah, my I'm G. Really Appreciate careful, you, man. bro. Um, 